grade 8 math number 1.1b, write decimals as rational numbers. As we said in the last video, a rational number is a number that can be written like a ratio, a fraction, like a over b, where a and b are negative or positive whole counting numbers. They're integers, and b isn't a zero. A terminating decimal is a decimal number that ends or terminates. 0.25, it ends at the 5. There's no more of a decimal past this. It's all done. And a repeating decimal is a decimal that has one or more digits that repeats infinitely, like 0.3333333, and the 3 just keeps on going. So we put a bar over the top of it and just write a couple of them, okay? We can convert decimals to rational numbers. We convert the decimals to fractions, to ratios. It's the same thing. Remember to reduce the rational number, that fraction, to its simplest form. We simplify it. And whatever we do to a numerator must also be done to the denominator. Remember, they get jealous. So 0.75 means 75 hundredths. This is tenths. This is hundredths. So this is 75 hundredths. It's 75 over 100. And it can be simplified. We can put 25 into both the numerator and denominator. 75 divided by 25 is 3. 100 divided by 25 is 4. So 0.75 becomes 3 fourths. See? So if we have 0.125, it means 125 thousandths. We rewrite it so the 125 is over the 1,000, and then we simplify it. I figured 25 could go into both of them, because I know it could go evenly into this one, and it's such a large number, I thought that would be a good start. So I divided the 125 by 25 and got 5. I divided the 1,000 by 25 and got 40. And I saw that 5 can go into 40 evenly, so I divided both the numerator and denominator by 5. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 40 divided by 5 is 8. I got 1 eighth. 0.125 is 1 eighth. So it's okay to simplify it more than once if the numbers are big. You can do this. There's no rule that says you can't simplify it more than once or twice. All right? So find a number that can go into both the numerator and denominator, and you'll be all set. You'll have the rational number, the fraction. But what do we do when it's a repeating decimal like 0.27? Well, what we do is we know that this is 0.272727 and it just keeps on going. So we put the bar over the top, right? Well, we're going to let x equal 0.27 with that bar over the top. That's going to be our equation. Now, because it has two repeating digits, 272727, we're going to multiply each side of this equation by 10 to the second power or 100, because 10 times 10 is 100. Now, if it had three repeating digits, like, I don't know, uh, 875, 875, 875, or something like that, and there were three digits that kept repeating, we'd use 10 to the third power. If it had four digits that kept repeating, we use 10 to the fourth power. See? So it has two repeating digits, so we're going to use 10 to the second power, which means 100, 10 times 10. I'm going to multiply both sides of this, x equals 0.27. I'm going to multiply both sides by 100. When we multiply this side, 100 times x gives us 100 x's. See? 100x. When we multiply this side by 100, all we're doing is moving the decimal place back two spots. So now it's 27.27272727. See? And what we do is, instead of writing all these two sevens, we stop it here and just put our bar over these two. See? So now we've got 27.27. Now, because x is equal to this 0.27 that repeats, we can subtract x from this side and the repeating 0.27 from this side. So we're doing the same thing to each side of the equal sign because x equals that, see? If you have 100 x's and you take one of them away, you have 99 x's, right? And when we take the 0.27 away from this side, what we're doing is we're creating a zero pair and we're eliminating it. So now we've got 99 x equals 27. So to isolate that x to one side, we divide both sides by 99. Do you remember from last year? So we divide this side by 99 and this side by 99. Well, when the numerator and denominator are the same, it creates a 1, doesn't it? That makes our invisible 1, our famous invisible 1 we talked about last year. So now we've got x is equal to 27 over 99. 
So now we just simplify it. And it looks to me like 9 can go into both because I know 3 times 9 is 27 and 99 is 9 times 11, isn't it? So we divide the numerator and denominator by 9 and we get 3 elevenths. So 0.27 that repeats is equal to 3 elevenths. Now if you're really confused about this invisible 1, well, then you're not, you didn't catch my video in grade 7 math. It was number 6.2a. And that'll give you more information about that invisible 1. In front of every variable, there's an invisible 1. It's a very short, short, quick video, and it'll be really helpful to you in algebra. So I advise you to go take a look at it. Number 6.2a in the grade 7 math uh, list, okay, in the playlist. All right, so that's how you write decimals as rational numbers. I'm going to talk about finding square roots and cube roots in the next video. I hope this was helpful. Don't forget to hit the like button if it was helpful so I know. And don't forget you can follow me on Twitter. See you next video. Bye.